When you scale at this size, you have to be more rigid about your processes, whether that's design, whether that's like attending code reviews on the, the designer side, like coming into the engineering code reviews, increasing transparency, designing flows, for example, in that last slide for your engineers. Those are the things that will make or break like a development process at that scale. I've seen a lot of instances where designers and developers will butt heads with each other, right? Mm -hmm. And I think there's a misunderstanding between the two sides where like sometimes the flexibility and kind of everything that, that designers bring to the table really conflicts with like the precision and sort of the, the efficiency that developers need. But at the end of the day, we want to ship a good product. That is like, right. there's very few people that go into work and say like, I want to make, I want to make the crappiest app possible. <laughs> like, you know, something I would be ashamed shame to put in my portfolio like no one's doing that right right we do care about the user experience we do care about making a high quality mm -hmm. product and so the the question is really how do we facilitate handoff mm -hmm. in such a way that it actually like makes that process easy for both sides and honestly builds relationships mm -hmm. like it builds that that sort of open door sort of policy back and forth of having engineers and designers talking with each other constantly right. it really does build relationships yeah. um, that are critical to delivering a good product we share common goals we need a common solution you're building the plane while you're flying it mm -hmm. and that is really what it feels like like things are dynamically changing you're having conversations even after handoff you're getting into these conversations conversations where a PM comes in and says, well, we need this change and we need to support this new use case. You have scope creep, you have scope increase and you go, you have to go back, talk to engineering. You know, obviously having that conversation on the design is pretty critical. Right. Really having this like very, this idea of like continuous development, continuous transparency, continuous mm -hmm. open door, like really does save you significant money because by the time the design team sees the final thing, Mm -hmm. There's usually not that much wrong. We usually don't have a lot to critique because we've already seen it 20 times. I always say I can like make a pretty picture really easily. It's like handing it off and making it something that engineers can implement is the hard part, right? And so, and of course, on the engineering side, they actually have to do the true work of like, of implementation, of bringing that to life, of coding it mm -hmm. together, you know? And so that you've got to have some transparency in that process between PM to UX and then UX to engineering. Like if you don't have transparency, all of that building the plane while it's flying is impossible. Like mm -hmm. you can't, especially at this scale. I mean, we're talking like, again, 200 people. We're talking like may, maybe there's 10 or 15 engineers just on one project. Like mm -hmm. you cannot scale that conversation. You can't just have an impromptu meeting for every right. single decision that gets sync. made. Yeah, I can't sync ad hoc with like 200 people. Exactly. Yeah. So collaboration is uh, obviously super challenging without some way to like to actually like have those conversations and have them specifically on the designs that we're implementing. And of course, there's plenty of uh, things, features that I'm sure we'll talk about maybe a little later, which, you know, within Zeppelin that allow you to see, uh, you know, diffs between different different version commits and uh, mm -hmm. sort of, of course, have those threaded conversations right. inside the app that make that actually possible. Let's say if you don't use a tool like Zeppelin, you have to recreate it <laughs> as best you can within the design software. You have to make the buckets that Zeppelin kind of generates for you just by default. You have to actually like recreate those things inside of your design tool. It's a lot of work. I mean, it frankly is a lot of work. You have to do a lot of documentation. And to me, it's like, a, it's kind of like a bit going, going backward in time. The less designers have to do that, the better. And frankly, mm -hmm. like if you, if you have a change, you've got to re-render that, or you've got to re, you've got to resubmit that, right? right? Whereas in Zeppelin, all you, all I've got to do is I'm, and let's say if I change a, a gap from uh, 20 mm -hmm. pixels to 10 pixels, right? And then I, I send that screen to Zeppelin. It's going to auto update that screen. It's going, I can add a comment about the commit and then the engineer is actually going to be able to click and see the diffs between, okay, it was previously 20 pixels, now it's 10 pixels, right? And then of course, if you're using Slack, they'll get an update to Slack about it. It's just, yeah, it's really, uh, really incredible for sort of communicating, uh, communicating those things. Everything that's built in this tool is purpose built to make that transition from design to development an easier process like engineer for engineers to be able to understand like how this
project should be broken up and um, how it actually uh, works. And uh, I think I think Flows is another good example of like Zeppelin kind of going the extra mile and making mm-hmm. the, those little extra features that you will not have by default in your Figma Flows. Mm-hmm.